Greetings, viewers, and welcome to another beer review with me here, the Master Puppets. Today, joined by Jakob the Lord Maltz. Today, looking at a beer I'm really excited about. Another beer from the ever so awesome David, or Dave, in the US. Rule, man. Ever so delightfully. Dr. Shed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is one I've been really excited about, to, uh, about trying. Even made me wear my Amarwaz shirt because it's a Scandinavian awesome Viking kind of themed band. <laughs> so, this is going to be cool. This is a beer based off something Danish. That is why I really wanted to try that. Uh, that's the thing I love about Dogfish Head when they do these ancient ale. And this is their newest ancient ale. This is the Dogfish Head Kvesia. What all you see here on the label is Ektvilpin, which is a, a Dan I guess you couldn't say a mummy because she's in really well preserved, but she's a very well preserved found from the Danish Bronze Age, about 1300 and, uh, it's BC, right? Yeah, 1300 BC, so, so that's old. <laughs> 3,300 years ago. Yeah, so that's crazy. And this beer is a modern interpretation of a recipe found in her brew bucket. And that's actually been made before uh, by Danish breweries. Uh, but, uh, on to this beer, it's on 10%, I guess you'd call it a traditional ale, uh, or as they say, ancient ale, ancient ale, brewed with Lincolnberry, cranberry, birch syrup, honey, cranberry juice, and herbs. And uh, yeah, it's on 10%, so it's really, really cool. I love these kind of ordeals. But, yeah, like the info, you can read it a lot. Yeah. Because there's some stuff, like, off with it. Oh, uh, well, of course, there's the off-centered ales, more off-centered people. Yes. And then we they go usually to use that slogan. Yeah. She was a leather-clad priestess, a member of the upper class. Yeah. And the thing is, if you've ever heard about her, if you see her tomb and stuff like that, her garb uh, is, is kind of unusual, because she has, a like, a leather string skirt, and she had a, a, a cow skins leather, I guess, uh, kind of garb on top of her with, was it wool of some sort? Yeah, I mean, kind of like something a, like yeah. that. And then a, a, le a leather belt buckle, or leather belt with a bronze buckle, which they tried to re recreate right there. Yeah. And, which is really cool. Uh, but, again, they say a uh, priestess. Now, the thing is, when they first found her, people thought she was a pleasure girl, I guess, a whore, or uh, a slave because of her garb. But the, the problem with that is that she had a very big burial mound. It's like four meters tall, and was it... 20 some meters in diameter. Yeah, it's a recreation of it because over time farmers and stuff has been breaking it down until they found uh, the grave, but What's really interesting is that she might have been of the upper class and the reason why you know about that is because she has this brew bucket and Bronze and bronze was for the upper class. I'm, I love this stuff because it's yeah, yeah, yeah. I really <laughs> wanted to talk about it So sorry for rambling, but you're gonna have to deal with it because she's from the upper class might, or she's from a higher, she has a higher status in their society. It's because of the bronze and then the brew bucket. And usually, the brew bucket would start with whomever in the village. And it would get and passed no around. No, well, no, probably not nobody. nobody. But it would get passed around the store. Or the store. <laughs> the, the, town. Store, the village. And the, they brew their, uh, not beer, but alcoholic beverage in there. And then every time you pass around, there's going to be yeast leftovers in the bucket that would apparently make the beer better, some sort of that. I had, I had a lecture about this stuff, actually, or, uh, uh, yeah, I guess it was, but, um, kind of like the yeast. Would the yeast would, I guess it's the yeast, but the flavors of the different beers brewed would be better after it had been used a few times, and then in the end, the bucket would end up with the highest member of the village or the society. So she's been very high the, on the social ladder, being buried with a brew bucket. Yeah. So, yeah, carry on. <laughs> All right. And in the most northerly limits of Scandinavia. No. Because <laughs> she's from Ekvild, which is close to Bailey in Denmark, and that's in the middle of Jutland. And that's close to the most southern, southern part limits. of Scandinavia. Which makes sense, because the trade with bronze and learning the skills to, to use bronze came with uh, the English, among others, and happened with southern Scandinavia. So, yeah, yeah. That, doesn't and that doesn't really make sense because they even do they even mention Denmark? I don't know. No, not at all. They even made this with a Swedish brewery. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Her tomb got it a recipe for millennia. Yes, that's actually true. And that's pretty cool because the recipe they found is analyzing the contents of the brew bucket, which has been done before 
But this is like the first easily accessible commercial yeah. example because the first one was in 1981 and the other one was from a local brewery that was way very expensive. It was like 2,000 some kroners for a bottle. So right. this is, yeah, this is awesome. We're going to try this. All right. Carry on, sorry. In her day before great wine arrived from the Near East, I don't know if that's true, alcoholic yeah, we beverages were cocktails of sugar rich ingredients like grain, fruit, yeah. and honey. Yeah, 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 yeah. With help from biomolecular archaeologist Patrick McGovern and Swedish brewery, Zilnes Hens Engbuckery. Where on earth these? You should have brewed it, thought we said. You should have brewed this. I know you have yeah, stuff yeah. in Dun Dun Collabs in Sweden before, but you should have brewed it in the Danish brewery. Yeah, come on. Kind of like from the <laughs> Jutland part, but whatever. Yeah. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> We've unearthed the secrets of her tart complex grog. And we're sharing our modern interpretation with you. Well, yeah. thank you very much, I guess. Awesome. I mean, I think it's awesome. As you can hear, I love this stuff. Um, I'm uh, big into old Scandinavian history, ancient history. I even took a, like, I'm taking courses about this stuff at the university and even mythology as well. Uh, so, he might be the science guy, but I'm the nerdy, I guess, Scandinavian history slash movies slash music, all kinds of, also comic book stuff. The interest of weird all over the board. But yeah, thanks a bunch, Dave. Long rambling intro. Let's just get into this beer. Sorry for the length. So we got a port. It's a nice hazy kind of dark amber color, or well, lightly hazy. What yeah. Call the head. Off oh, white. Off white. And kind of like looks a little spritzy actually. Can't yeah. Like. Also, I think one of the spices they used in here was bog myrtle because when we started, or when the Scandinavians or Danes started making alcoholic beverages, one of the things that you used to preserve it was bog myrtle because we didn't have hops in Scandinavia then. Yeah, and, it, and I, I think that's one of the spices. It's one of the spices in the, the Danish replicas at least. And the Danish replicas also actually had uh, lincolnberry, cranberry, ber uh, cranberry. I don't know if they had bird syrup and honey, but they definitely had lincolnberry and cranberry. So, but I, this is a modern interpretation as well, but let's check out the aroma on it. Oh yeah, I smell bog myrtle right away. That's one of the aromas I pick up instantly. Yeah. That is very easy to extinguish, or <laughs> pick up, extinguish. But it kind of like have this sweet, grainy yeah. smell to it. Sweet grain, there is kind of like that honey note. I guess the syrup, bird syrup is what yeah. you pick up. And I definitely smell like cranberries. I don't know how much uh, lingonberry to do that. No. There is some berry, red berry note. I'm definitely like it's grainy, slightly cereal grain, but that bog myrtle is really forward. Yeah. And I, there's almost like an estery quality too, like a generic fruity ester, almost like in English ales. Semi kind of like a uh, sour tang. Yeah, like a tartness. Yeah. Like a tart berry. Which actually oh, might that's, be lips. Lips, yeah. But I I can't remember what that's called. That's Lincolnberry is Tudebel, and cranberry is Tanabel. I don't know what. Perhaps is that a, I guess it's a current, red current. Yeah, yeah. red currants, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's got, definitely got that spice kick, almost like a slightly peppery feel too. Yeah. Um, like a, it's got that bog myrtle, but almost like a thyme kind of yeah. thing almost. It kind of like feels that the, uh, uh, that uh, tang, sour feel to it, kind of like wood feel very common in that day. Yeah, yeah but I guess because it's probably been infected by the wild yeast. Because yeah, it maybe more yeast. predominant though. But but, yeah. but the fruit is, smells nice and I really want to give this a taste. Uh, yeah. Doesn't smell like ten percent at all. Let's give it a taste. Cheers. Cheers. Wow, that is really cool. Oh, it's got a, a really nice. Time. You really taste um, the lingonberry. Yeah, the lingonberry is one of the flavors I pick up. And and, and again, red currants. And right now in the aftertaste, I'm getting that grainy kind of feel. I'm getting the bog myrtle, honey, honey, yeah. yeah. It's got, and it's not sour. It's just got a tart twang, and the ten percent is very well hidden. What did you call the body on it? Well, it's it's pretty much medium. Yeah, on the lighter side. Th though. Yeah, this is really refreshing. I, I hope this is not going to be a one off. Like sahti, they do once in a while. Yeah, I hope this is the same for this because this is actually really good. Yeah, especially like. Well, well, they, need to, they need to get the story straight, but other than that, it's <laughs> pretty please, nice. Please uh, check it out. Mention Denmark more on this label. <laughs> or just once, I guess. Mm. 
some candied kind of flavors. It's got the definitely kind of syrupy, well not super syrupy because the fruit balance and all, yeah. uh, the, the berries, but some sugary kind of honey like flavors. And then some like sweet malts, like caramel flavors. And it's just, and it, it also comes in a floral, yeah, kind floral of, kind of flavor. Yeah. Um, I think it's really nice. It's not mind blowing, but it's like a really cool beer to try. And I'm actually gonna give this an 80. And it's not just because of the the whole story, thing, story yeah. and all. That's a big plus for me as well because I'm a big fan of stuff like that. But it it is a really nice drinking beer. I think the same with Sakti. I mean, that was nice, but that was felt less authentic compared to this because it yeah. just has so much of that chai tea spice. What about you? Well, actually, I gotta agree with you most of the way, but I'm gonna go a little lower and go 87. Um, it's just really interesting trying to taste yeah, yeah, what these kind of beers, 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 beers that you're drinking. Yeah. And, uh, well, pretty much the only thing I got to say is try to make a beer with Tista. Tista, Tista, yeah. Or maybe a beer here. Christian. Oh, Christian, Christian is really big yeah. on the uh, old style reviving well. traditional old styles. That would be cool. A dog <laughs> and beer here, cool that. Uh, wishful thinking. But <laughs> guys, I don't think anyone's reviewed this yet. So, but if you've had this, we're in Denmark, <laughs> and we've been rambling. We've been, this is a long video. I'm so sorry, guys. But definitely let us know what you think of the dogfish head Kvasir, If you've had it. And uh, yeah, what do you think of the ancient nails? Are they all shit? I don't know. But definitely let us know. Thanks a bunch, David, for sending this one out. Or Dave, you're uh, fucking awesome. You or really you're awesome. awesome. But uh, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter, and also Tumblr. And we're gonna say cheers. We're gonna stop rambling, drink this, and see you guys in another video.